Hi, I'm Jack. As you may know, this summer, on the 4th of July, the EC building was set on fire. We have footage of a criminal breaking in through this door and setting the, a fire within the EC building. When the firefighters arrived, they found the animals unresponsive. As it turns out, this was just a self-defense method for when they experience intense heat. We sat down with Dr. Otley, Mrs. Alexander, and Mrs. Beckwith to ask them about how the fire affected St. Martin's and the plans for rebuilding. I got here, I had some information, but we immediately got together, prayed for what transpired, and that's when I knew that we were, um, you know, that I was part of the community and that we were getting ready to put a team together that will help, help the early childhood building uh, be rebuilt. My initial thoughts also at the time, soon thereafter, were that, you know, we could rebuild in, uh, and be up and running by the start of school. Well, little did I know that that's just not that's just not the way these things work, and that we needed to go through a process. But before we could go down any particular road and consider any options for early childhood, the fact that um, the church um, was so generous with anything we needed made the decision to take a minute and do and think about what's right for the children and for the teachers and staff and you know, on Claiborne Hall a lot easier. Um, we were very surprised by the fire and it was very upsetting. Um, I think we've come a long way since July 4th. Um, we are now talking to architects that built the middle school and um, there's some plans already in place that we are looking at and so we're moving forward. The children that were affected were the beginner three-year-olds and the pre-K four-year-olds and also one kindergarten class. So the beginners in the pre-K uh, classes are in the church building and uh, they're very settled and have great classrooms down there with lots of toys and um, materials. And the kindergarten classroom is now in what was the religion room. So it's in Lower Young Hall. How many animals were hurt or killed in the fire? None of them. It's a miracle. Thanks to all the firefighters, we got them out. Uh, what of the lab still remains after the fire? The walls and the windows. Everything else has been removed. My immediate reaction was to get to the science lab to help with all the animals. And I was in shock, too. But the firefighters helped me get all the animals out, and I just went into action and got them all set up at my house where they spent the rest of the summer. And uh, the fact that we were unable to then uh, rebuild in, in the exact same way that we had um, the building for the amount of money that they thought we would get from the insurance company um, ha ha has really uh, propelled us into thinking about um, not just uh, what, you know, Claiborne Hall could look like um, you know, immediately after the fire, but what would it look like long term? Best option was in fact if we needed additional space to go down. And so what we're going to uh, create is uh, two levels, a lower level and an upper level, that will house classrooms, a multi-use space in the bottom, a lunchroom. The upper level will include an expanded science lab, an art room, and an innovation space, um, all interconnected and uh, the ability for kids to play in and outside. You know, everybody's excited about what, um, what can happen. So there'll be a theme that connects uh, the largest entry point in the school with the oldest students in the, in the school. And so it'll be a, a lovely way to anchor on campus with this uh, same type of design um, there and uh, matching what we've got here. If everything works out, shovels will be in the ground at the end of January and, and um, the construction process will, will, it will start. St. Martin's would like to thank the entire school and church communities for their patience with this process. Together we will get through this and be even better off than before.